Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, by the Lord God Most High, above all women on the earth, for he has so exalted your name that your praise shall be undying on our lips. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. We commemorate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And in this Mass, we pray for the donor's intention, but also a friend of mine has also asked me to remember her very specially in this Mass as she celebrates her birthday. We pray for Eki in Abulele, who celebrates her birthday today. We pray also for her parents. She's asked that we pray very specially for her parents and also for her professional exam coming up on the 8th of July. So we bring these intentions before the Lord and also ask God to bless all those others who have requested us to remember them in our prayers as we also remember Glacy Wheeler who celebrates her birthday today. And to celebrate this Mass worthily, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. As we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, grant we pray, O Lord, through her intercession, that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. It is the Lord who speaks. That day I will re-erect the tottering heart of David, make good the gaps in it, restore its ruins, and rebuild it as it was in the days of old, so that they can conquer the remnant of Edom and all the nations that belonged to me. It is the Lord who speaks, and he will carry this out. The days are coming now, it is the Lord who speaks, when harvest will follow directly after plowing, the treading of grapes soon after sowing, when the mountains will run with new wine and the hills all flow with it. I mean to restore the fortunes of my people, Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them, plant vineyards and drink their wine, dig gardens and eat their produce. I will plant them in their own country, never to be uprooted up again. Out of the land I have given them, says the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord speaks peace to his people. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace, peace for his people and his friends and those who turn to him in their hearts. The Lord speaks peace to his people. Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven. The Lord speaks peace to his people. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, 
and peace shall follow his steps. The Lord speaks peace to his people. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. John's disciples came to Jesus and said, Why is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not? Jesus replied, Surely the bridegroom's attendants would never think of mourning as long as the bridegroom is still with them. But a time will come for the bridegroom to be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunken cloth Onto an old cloak because the patch pulls away from the cloak and the tear gets worse. Nor do people put new wine into old skin, wine skins. If they do, the skins burst, the wine runs out, and the skins are lost. No, they put new wine into fresh skins, and both are preserved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading today is still from the book of Amos. And in this chapter 9 of Amos, he speaks about the restoration of the Davidic kingdom. Israel, Amos has been prophesying that Israel will be taken into exile. But at the same time, he's saying, God is going to restore the kingdom of David after that. And he will bring about a time of harvest, a time when there will be peace and there will be uh, restoration in the land. And because of that, the people are going to suffer for a long time waiting for the Messiah to come to restore all these prophecies. Because when the kingdoms of Israel and Judah were destroyed, the people kept anticipating the restoration because of the prophecies, like the one we have just listened to from the book of Amos. And when was the, was the prophecy fulfilled? It was fulfilled in Jesus the Messiah, the one who comes. And that is why we can understand the gospel. Jesus says that the bridegroom is with them. And when the bridegroom is around, there will be no need to fast. He is the bridegroom. He is the reason why people have been anticipating, waiting for the Messiah. And the Messiah is right there. So why do they need to fast? Because he is present and he can attend to their needs. And because the bridegroom is present, they don't have to do anything, you know, towards anticipating his coming. He's already there. And all they need to do is to lay their worries, their challenges, their difficulties before the Messiah. And then he takes all of that away from them. Moreover, he will bring peace and a time of healing for the land. But then, the presence of the Messiah is challenging. Jesus' presence is challenging. He is a new. He's come to restore. But at the same time, if we do not accept him as the new wine to do away with the old, the things of the old, then we will not be able to benefit from what he brings to us. And that is what he's saying, that you do not put new wine into old wine skins. 
This is a time where the wine skins were they were not in bottles, and so the, uh, the the new wine would not stay with the old skins. It actually can bust from from studies and history. We know that this was the case, and so Jesus was using a situation which they know. But of course, we are also used to old clothes. If you put a new piece of cloth, sew it around a very old one, it's going to pull out. That is also very factual. And so Jesus is saying, for us to benefit from his coming, we need to do away with the old. There are so many things in us that need to be put aside so that Jesus can live, can blossom, his life can blossom in us. We need that grace. Let us ask him to give us that new wine each day so that it can purge out the old wine in us. O oh Mary, you shine continuously along our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross were near to the pain of Jesus, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people, know what we need, and we trust that you will provide for those needs, so that as at Cana of Galilee, joy and celebration may return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took up our sufferings upon himself and took up our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test and deliver us from every danger. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, as we rejoice in commemorating the mother of your son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may advance towards eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exhortation of all the saints and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave her us, through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs 
in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have had us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Judge, our Apostolic Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. All generations will call me blessed, for God has looked on his lowly handmaid. Let us pray. Renewed with this heavenly food, we humbly implore you, Lord, that having received your Son, born of the tender virgin, on the sacramental signs, we may possess him in words and hold fast to him in deeds, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Flower of Carmel, blossom and bearing one, light of heaven, mother Vine and virgin, gentle parent, pure beyond human love, bless your children, stir shining for